What do Selena Gomez, Michael Jackson and Lady Gaga all have in common? They all have lupus. Hey guys, you're here with Mark Zoll and in this video we are going to be talking about lupus. We are going to be talking about what lupus is, how you can be diagnosed with lupus, the signs and symptoms to look out for and what it's like to live with lupus. I've lived with lupus for 10 years now and hopefully through my knowledge and experience I can pass this on to you guys and you can learn a bit more about what lupus is and we can raise the awareness together. So let's start with the main question. What is lupus? Lupus is an autoimmune disease that can affect any organ or any part of your body causing inflammation. There is no known cure for lupus and anyone suffering with lupus will have to take medication for the rest of their life. In an autoimmune disease, your, um, your immune system mistakes healthy cells in your body as foreign objects and then your body produces these proteins called autoantibodies to attack these cells, even though these cells are completely healthy. These cells then become damaged and inflamed and they're unable to work properly and this is what then leads to the multiple health issues and sometimes even organ failure. There are quite a few different types of lupus but even if two people are suffering from the exact same type of lupus it still doesn't mean that they're going to require the same treatment or they're living the same life because it's completely different and it still affects the, every single person in a different way. There are three main types of lupus that I want to highlight in this video and those are systemic lupus known as SLE, discoid lupus which affects your skin and drug induced lupus which is pr uh, brought on by some drugs that you may be taking but it does clear after you stopped taking these drugs. When most people say they have lupus they are usually referring to systemic lupus because this is the most common type of lupus. Systemic means it can affect any part or any organ in your body with this virus and the main complication with systemic lupus is lupus nephritis and lupus nephritis is a specific uh, complication of lupus that it attacks your kidney cells mainly the kidney cells that help filter liquids and fluids through your body. Up to 60% of SLE lupus sufferers will end up suffering with lupus nephritis at some point in their life. There are six different stages of lupus nephritis that you can be diagnosed with. Stage one being the least severe and stage six being the worst. When I was diagnosed 10 years ago, I was diagnosed at stage four. Stage four means that you have sufficient damage already to your kidneys. So there's damaged cells and there's some scarring that has appeared from all the past damage and the lupus is still active and still actively damaging your kidney cells. So I, requ I require treatment almost straight away after being diagnosed. Right, so let's move on to diagnosing lupus. Lupus is most commonly diagnosed between the age of 15 and 44. However, 15% of people who eventually get diagnosed with lupus didn't show any signs of it until they became 18 years old. I was 17 when I was diagnosed. It's a well-known fact that lupus can be very difficult to diagnose and that's because the symptoms that arise when you are feeling uh, when you're suffering from lupus are very similar to a common cold or a bacterial infection or a virus infection and they range from headaches, joint pain, muscle pain, tiredness, uh, swelling of the joints, all those common rundown feelings that you usually feel when you know just feeling unwell that's what you feel when you start developing these signs of lupus. One really unique symptom though that is very specific to lupus is known as the butterfly rash. Now the butterfly rash is a rash that appears on your face and it appears over your cheeks and it appears going across your nose and it ends up looking like a butterfly uh, the butterfly shape on your face. This usually means that there's something a bit more serious going on than just your common cold or illness so it's definitely advisable to seek some medical advice if you do see this butterfly rash up here. Rash up here. To be officially diagnosed with lupus you would definitely need to take a blood test and a urine sample. From your urine sample, your doctors will be looking at how much protein you're um, excreting from your body and in your blood test they'll check your creatinine levels which shows how well your kidneys are working and they'll check your red blood cells and your white blood cells to see how everything is working inside your body. In the UK it is reported that one out of every 1,000 people suffer from lupus. That's nearly 700,000 people just in the UK alone. However, this number is probably actually a lot bigger than that because there's, it's so hard to diagnose lupus it can take up to six years for someone to be diagnosed with lupus in this country and that's just far too long and the reasons behind that is because the awareness of lupus isn't as high as it probably should be and there are not enough specialist referrals for patients who are suffering from the symptoms that may lead to lupus. It is not exactly known how someone can get lupus, there's lots of research and lots of theories out there but there's nothing concrete for, all, for us to fall back on just yet. So I'm gonna go through a few of the factors that are really prominent in the research and you can make your own decision based on that. There's lots of research out there that shows lupus to be genetic, but this isn't 100% proven just yet. 
and other research shows that it could be down to environmental factors like being exposed to sunlight too much or due to an infection or bacteria um, that you've picked up um, during your lifetime. It is known that lupus does run in the family and if your parents do have lupus, there is a tiny bit more chance that you will have lupus as well. This chance isn't that big. It's only between five and 13%, but there is a chance that if you do have parents who suffer from lupus, you will also suffer from lupus as well. Another reason that scientists have studied in the past are different ethnic groups that share similar genes. It has been proven that certain ethnic groups have a higher chance of getting lupus, and those ethnic groups are African, Asian, and Hispanic. That doesn't mean that if you aren't part of those ethnic groups, you'll never get lupus because anyone can be diagnosed with it. Take me for example, I don't fit into any of those ethnic groups and I was diagnosed with lupus. Another cause that I want to talk about is estrogen. Estrogen is a hormone that everyone produces. However, women produce far more estrogen than men do. And the fact that nine out of 10 lupus sufferers are female, I know, staggering statistic, that says to the scientists and the researchers out there that estrogen might play a role in people that who get lupus. Not enough is known just yet about the relationship between estrogen and lupus, but research is still being done now to find out how or if estrogen does affect if someone gets lupus or not. Again, it's very important to remember that even though it's more likely that women will get lupus, men do get diagnosed with lupus as well. Again, take me as another example. Even though it's only one out of 10, there are still many, many male lupus sufferers out there who are going through the exact same thing as all you girls. So upon being diagnosed with lupus, it's not a far stretch to say that your entire life will change from that day. You'll be on medication for the rest of your life and you'll be going to hospital regularly to check that your uh, lupus isn't getting any worse and to make sure that your health is being maintained to the best standard. You'll also start loads and loads of medications. The main medication that you'll be taking is called an immunosuppressant tablet. Immunosuppressant tablets are used to suppress your immune system, to make it weaker. And the reason you're making it weaker is because if you can make your immune system weaker, it will stop the active spread of lupus, damaging your healthy tissue cells. However, because you're making your immune system weaker, this increases the chance of you getting any other infections or any other illnesses. So what needs to happen is you and your doctor need to come up with a balance. A balance that means your immune system is strong enough that you don't end up falling ill every other week due to other infections, but it's also weak enough so that your lupus is not so active and damaging your healthy cells. While taking these immunosuppressant drugs, it's very important to highlight the fact that you need to protect yourself from sunlight. Because of the mix of medication that you're on and because of how your immune system is working during this time, exposure to sunlight increases your risk of skin cancer greatly. So whenever you're out in the sun, even if it's not a hot day, as long as the sun is out, it's highly recommended that you wear some sun cream or sun lotion to protect yourself. Other medication that I had to take when I was diagnosed with lupus include blood, blood pressure tablets, steroid tablets, um, iron injections, sodium bicarbonate tablets, folic acid, and some more as well. Not only do you have to put up with taking tons of tablets every morning and evening, but you also have to put up with the side effects. Oh yes, the side effects. These range from severe headaches, feeling nauseous, extreme fatigue, mood swings, sleep deprivation, and many, many more. Because a lupus sufferer has to take so many medications and over such a long period of time, this could also lead to other health issues later on in your life. This can lead from hypertension, osteoporosis, or even diabetes. Living with lupus. Easily the hardest thing to deal with when you suffer from lupus is the fatigue. So you wake up feeling tired already, even if you manage to have a decent sleep the night before, you then have to drag yourself out of bed and go about your day just like everybody else, not looking ill like anybody else, and then you get to lunchtime and everyone else says, oh yes, I feel tired as well. No, they do not understand. Some days you can literally spend the whole day in bed because that's just how tired you are. You then have to plan your day all around your medication. Some of your medication needs to be taken with food, some of your medication needs to be taken on an empty stomach, and then some of your medication is taken in the morning, at lunchtime, and in the evening. Some medications also make you feel nauseous, so you wanna make sure that when you're taking these, you're at home or you're somewhere comfortable, so you don't have to put up with the stresses of anything else that's going on. And if you do go out for the evening, you need to make sure you take your medication with you, you need to make sure it's packed correctly, and you need to make sure you take it on time, and again, whether you're eating food or not. You need to make sure that you're not drinking any alcohol because it will affect your medication as well. And you need to consider all these factors in throughout your whole day, every day for the rest of your life. Going away can also be a really stressful time as well because you need to plan ahead. You need to make sure that you've packed your medication for the entire trip. Make sure you've packed the correct medication for each time of the day. 
And you also need to pack extras because you never know what could happen. Upon being diagnosed with lupus, you're also going to spend lots of time in hospitals. Lots of time getting checkups, lots of time seeing doctors and nurses, and lots of time spent in hospital overnight. When I was first diagnosed with lupus, I spent six weeks in hospital whilst doing all their tests to see if I had lupus or not. I then had to go back into hospital once every week for the next six months so they could do further tests and make sure that my kidneys weren't getting any worse from, when the, uh, from the day that they diagnosed me with lupus. Because you go to hospital so often for all these checkups, you're going to have a blood test every single time you go to hospital. So unfortunately, whether you like needles or the sight of blood or not, you're going to have to get used to it because you're going to be having thousands of blood tests throughout your life. And for some, that is really hard to get their head around. I wasn't too fussed about it. I didn't really mind having my uh, blood taken, but I know that there are lots of people out there who don't like needles and are very, very scared of them. Another thing that sticks with me from my time in hospital and being uh, treated over the last 10 years is just how many procedures and how many tests you go through when you're in hospital. You don't ever think about this before you actually have it done to you, but I've had x-rays done, I've had MRI scans, ultrasound scans, biopsies done, I've had endoscopies, which is the camera going down your throat to check inside your stomach. I've had so many things done to me, and if you um, are suffering from lupus yourself, you'll understand that you didn't ever realize that you're gonna to have to go through all these procedures and you almost like, you almost know them now like the back of your hand. So the next time you go for one, it's like, yep, been there, done that, know how it works. And it can be really hard to come to terms with this. It can be really hard to come to terms with having all these needles and all these things prodded and poked inside you and all these tests that you need to be done. And it can be scary at times as well, especially if you're doing everything for the first time. I know that I was definitely scared when I was going through my initial procedures because I was only 17 when I started all this. So there is so much to consider when you're living with lupus. And it's these traits and these feelings and these experiences that no one else gets to see other than you. And it's these traits and experiences that means that no one else will fully understand what you're going through because you are the only one going through it. I wanna try and end on a positive note. So lots is written by us loopies about how no one understands our condition, no one understands how ill we are, and no one can really put themselves in, in our shoes to see how we live our lives day to day. But you know the things they can see? They can see our strength of character. They can see our determination to make the best life possible for ourselves. They can see that we are all fighters and they can see that we treat everyone as equal and we never ever judge a book by its cover because we know what that feels like. Better still, we as lupus sufferers can feel that our own courage built up inside us. We can feel how much of a fighter we are and how the attitude of I can do what I want with this life and I'm not gonna let anything stand in my way and that is all built upon our days of suffering from our lupus. Yes, of course we all have bad days. People that don't suffer from lupus also have bad days. Does that mean that our bad days are worse than their bad days? No, of course it doesn't. But what it means is when we have our good days, we appreciate them so much more and our good days become so much better than everybody else's good days. Right guys, that's the end of the video. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Um, I know it's quite a long video and there's quite a lot of information packed in here, but I did want to pull it all in one place for you guys. If you liked it at any point, leave me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. I've got lots of other videos for you to watch now. And leave me a comment down below, guys. Do you know someone that has lupus? Do you have lupus? What advice and tips can you give to anyone going through the same thing? Um, so thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video, guys.